Well, we got 41 games on this uh, Tuesday in college basketball. A couple already uh, have uh, gone underway, tipped off, maybe one or two finished here. But uh, a lot of mid-major programs here tonight to consider. A lot of basketball coming up here before the end of the year. And we've got you covered here on the college basketball tip-off show. We're going to go over a couple of these games here tonight. And, of course, three best bets are coming your way on this very important Customer Appreciation Tuesday here, the final one of 2023. That's $2 best bets and daily packages across wagertalk.com. We'll get into that coming up, but let us dive into some of the games that we have coming up here today and uh, one of the bigger games on the card. Brian Leonard is going to break down for us here and it involves uh, good old Virginia traveling to take on good old Penny and Memphis here. Two teams with big aspirations. One's going to lose this one here, Bri. Which one is it? Yeah, I thought this would be a good game to talk about since you've got the clashing of styles in this one. As the Cavaliers are 9-1 to and try to slow down the athletic Memphis squad. Uh, Virginia is traditionally a very good defensive team that looks to frustrate the opposition. They're allowing only 53.3 points per game on the season. Traditional Virginia, just a great defense. Uh, holding the opposition to 41.0 effective shooting percentage. But this is the first true road game this year for the Cavaliers. And their preferred style of play, at least in my opinion, seems to work better at home than it does on the road where the opposition could dictate the pace. Uh, Memphis, as you mentioned, 8-2 and two on the young year. Their losses coming to Villanova and Mississippi, two pretty good basketball teams. Uh, they've been involved in four straight games, decided by six points or less. So that in-game pressure for the Tigers, I think, is an advantage. And what we can be expecting in this close contest, the line's only about three and a half here in the three range. So uh, if it comes down to that, I trust Memphis, who's been through a lot more of these games lately than Virginia has uh, because of an active early schedule. It's just the fourth home game of the season for the Tigers. Uh, it's also the second of four straight home games for them. So there's, they've been at home, played their last game at home. Virginia has to travel for the first true road game of the season. I think Memphis will dictate the pace here, which puts me on the Memphis squad. Usually, if you got a team that likes to run, I prefer that to the over. Uh, Virginia defensive team prefer that to the under, but I think it'll be a more of a higher scoring game. I'll take Memphis minus the points in this one. It's almost as if uh, Penny, uh, you're putting a schedule together this year. is like, I don't want to hear any crap about not playing quality non-conference opponents. The dudes, uh, this schedule for Memphis this year has been absolutely brutal before they get into uh, conference play. So kudos to them. Should be a good one here uh tonight and we got another pretty good one uh coming up here uh trig and uh i call me crazy i've been going back and forth with this game part of me wants to go to the over part of me wants to go to the side what are we doing with florida and michigan here in this matchup so i mean i lean toward florida here i think the numbers gotten a little bit away where it's like gonna just stay like a free play type lean for me but i think they're probably the right side if you're just looking at like the way these two teams match up the just the overall sort of caliber of both teams of so michigan was a team that i was like very vocal uh, about disliking coming into the season joey did a preview yeah. where i pretty much did 20 minutes of just talk about how much i disliked this team how much i thought that you know they were probably a bottom you know four to five team in the, in the big 10 and they come out uh, they blast me for a 5% play against UNC Asheville, win by 100, come back, crush Youngstown State, blow out St. John's, couldn't have looked better. But you know what? Since then, they look like exactly the team that I sort of expected them to be this season. Um, and, and, you know, this is kind of what I thought they would be. Six and five, they've got a couple questionable losses. Long Beach State, we just talked about Memphis. They lost a close game to Memphis, lose to Oregon, who... Uh, I didn't think was very good. And now the takeaway from the Syracuse game over the weekend, I really don't think Oregon is, is much to write home about. Um, so just not, not impressed with Michigan, pretty much where I thought they would be. Now, Florida, I went against last week, 5% play on East Carolina. 
I got the money easily there, but it was a game where I, I was willing to go against Florida kind of in like the sleepy, like finals, neutral court spot. The game was out in Lakeland. I thought it was a boatload of points for them to be laying in, in a game that really was just going to probably be a go through the motions and get the win type game. So I think because of that, they're actually a little bit undervalued here. At least they were um, at like two, two and a half. Now it's up to three, three and a half. I think you'd have to, you know, be, there's going to be a point where you don't want to take a bad number. Uh, but I, when I look at this, the teams next to each other, Florida's just so superior. And you've got a coach I really like in Todd Golden in his second year that I think is kind of like starting to get the pieces together. Uh, it, it, you know, that's what this team is, right? I mean, it's all transfers and they've all been great. I mean, you know, they've all been f- fantastic. Like Walter Clayton from Iona has been awesome leading the team in scoring. Ty- Tyree Samuel from Seton Hall's played great. Uh, Poland missed a couple games. He's been awesome. The center, it's Hangladen, Hangladen from, from Marshall, the seven footer has fit in nicely. And so now I kind of see a, a Florida team with a coach that I've always really expected in Todd Golden, that's like starting to put the pieces together. And it, and it makes me think that they're going to be a team that I want to get involved with going forward because you put, you know, seven and three, they've got 10 games under their belt, but this group uh, of, of transfer portal guys that he's brought in are seeming to mesh. And I think that's really important when you start to evaluate teams this far into the season, you know, we had teams evaluated based on what they were on paper a month and a half ago. But now we can start to look at, at you know, are the guys they brought in meshing? Is it working? And I think it's it's going to work, or it is working, uh, for Florida. Another place that they have a nice edge in this one is on the, uh, you know, is rebounding. I think that this is a relatively even matchup until you look at the rebounding numbers. Florida, number one in the country, total rebounds. Michigan, close to two, you know, 200. And, you know, th- those second chance points could very well be the difference in this game. It's another neutral court game, Charlotte, North Carolina somewhat regional although michigan's got fans everywhere and they, they they'll travel good enough but still uh neutral floor i think florida's the better team the number got away a little bit but i still lean the gators way uh even at like three and a half i think they probably get the money both these teams 15 5 and 1 to the over i know vino's got to be salivating at a uh at an over uh possibility in that game as i'm sure they're going to be bombing away from three and since neither team can actually defend it, should be a very interesting one with Florida and Michigan. And we welcome in uh, Rob Vino. And Rob, you got uh, another very interesting game here, getting all the big marquee names uh, covered for you guys here today. So smash that like button. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you're new to us here at Wager Talk TV. Marquette at Providence will be our uh, our next one here, Vino, and it's just not Ed Cooley's Providence anymore, uh, is it? Uh, Marquette laying a number on the road, you buying it, or uh, you think uh, maybe Providence maybe got still a little uh, little bit of Ed Cooley as a dog in them uh, remaining? What do you think? Yeah, we're gonna find out, right, Joe? Because this is Big <laughs> East conference season now, and. Kim English is going to be put to the fire. Um, Brian was talking about schedules and favorable schedules thus far in this season earlier. And for Providence, it's been that way, right? 11 games played, eight of them at home, two neutrals and only one road. So they've been very, very comfortable here in Providence, Rhode Island, 6-0 and straight up, um, 4-3-1 and against the spread. They're 6-2 and to the under. Uh, at home so far this season, which kind of, if you look through their numbers, Joe, you would say that Ed Cooley's presence still exists because they've been pretty good defensively. Competition has been a little bit subpar. We'll get into that in a second. Providence's home games right now, all eight of them averaging 139.9 points per game. Um, The only game that was really close to this price range that we're going to see tonight was the game they played against Wisconsin here in Providence and the Friars won that one 72 to 59 is one and a half point dog. So, you know, the underdog situation arose at home and they came through in their one real try. Um, it's only the third true road game for Marquette here, but their two roads have been tough. They've been tested. They go to Illinois as two point dogs. They win that game 71 to 64. They go to Wisconsin. So we have a common opponent here. They're three-point favorites, and they get beat 
by the in-state team, 75-64. Um, that was the only instance where Marquette has been a road favorite, which they will be tonight, a true road favorite. And Wisconsin, of course, like I said, is the common opponent, but it's hard to gauge that because one team played them at home, one team got, got them on the road. So we'll let that go. But if you take a look at the schedule to date, I mean, Marquette's schedule is significantly Ooh. tougher overall. Illinois, UCLA, Kansas, Purdue, Wisconsin, Texas, that's six teams in the top 50 that they played. And Marquette's gone four and two against those teams. So pretty good start to the season for Shaka Smart. Providence has only played two teams in that category, the Wisconsin win. They go to Oklahoma and get destroyed, 72 to 51. And we could go on and on about stellar defensive numbers between these two because they've been really good defensively so far. But I'm going to look more towards the total here, Joe, and play under. I know it's risen. Mm. It's gotten some money to the over, but I'm not exactly sure why. It's up to 146 and a half right now. Four of the six games that Marquette played against those top 50 teams, which I just listed, um, stayed under this current number of 146 and a half. The only two that got over were when they played Purdue and Texas. Those two teams average 86 and 81 a game, two of your better offenses in the nation. Providence isn't one of those types of teams. Providence averaging 74 and a half a game against really lesser competition thus far. So I think they could struggle with the Marquette defense. I think Providence will play their um, brand of defense as well against Marquette. Marquette is shown on the road so far, two straight unders when faced with a really good opponent, 135. Uh, against Illinois, 139 against Wisconsin, both under this 146 and a half. So that's the way I'm going to look at it. Uh, like I say, it's attracted some money to the over, but I'm just not getting there with that. I think this one stays under. It's a Big East Conference opener. We should see a lot of uh, focus and intensity out of both sides. Give me under 146 and a half. It's such a huge game for this point in the season too because this is exactly the kind of game if Marquette is as good as we think they are you know then you don't lose this game it's that simple like yeah. if you're if if you're as good as we all think good teams lose this game elite teams don't and in the last 10 years interesting note in the big east in conference play the team that goes on to win eventually the Big East regular season conference champion doesn't lose more than three conference games and no more than five. This is a pretty big game here if we're going to take Marquette seriously here. So should be an extremely interesting matchup here. Also very interesting is the final customer appreciation day of the year. It is today. That's right. If you head over to wagertalk.com, $2 packages right now available, each and every handicapper, including Brian Leonard, including Adam Trigger, including Rob Vino. Best bets, guys. Two bucks right now. What an awesome way to be able to partner up here with any one of these guys, or hell, all of them for that matter here, is each and every one of them will tell you what they got locked and loaded, ready to go here today for. Two bucks. Can't get any better than $2 right now. So make sure you visit them over at wagertalk.com. All right. We got best bets now for you. And uh, some really good games here across the board and some value, I think, uh, presenting themselves. And Brian Leonard, uh, I love this Indiana State team. I, I think they've been extremely undervalued. We've been talking about them here on the show. It's a hell of a number they're laying, uh, but it'll be interesting to see if you like them as much as I like them and tell the folks what you got on this Customer Appreciation Tuesday. Yeah, I really like today's card. Uh, got my top uh, NHL play up there right now for $2. I also have eight college basketball plays, and we've been doing very well mm. in college basketball. Very consistent. Mm. Uh, loving the card today. You can get my entire card for $39. Get the five hockey, get the get the eight basketball or you can just get my top play which is the nhl play and it's only two dollars um yeah we're talking about uh teams and their schedules so far check out this game tennessee state and indiana state the tigers of tennessee state the good news is they're off to a seven to five start on the season actually that's great news bad news is the seven wins came against fisk which i believe is carlton and his family <laughs> Kentucky State, 
who I've never heard of before, <laughs> Portland. Trig? Midway, <laughs> which I think is a movie. <laughs> Southeast Louisiana, Austin P. and Boyce, who I believe is the third or fourth brother from Bryce Har- Harper. I think uh, those are the teams that they've played so far. Uh, mm. The three Division One teams they defeated have rankings of 254th, 306th, and 245th. The only good teams they faced resulted in a 25-point loss at Oregon and a 22-point loss at Liberty. Even with this easy schedule, the Tigers have allowed a 52.7 opponent effective field goal percentage. And this is also their fourth game in a 10-game span, all in different locations. Um, I don't even need to get into the Indiana State side to tell you this is a team I'm looking to bet against right now, and that's Tennessee State. Uh, Indiana State, 10-1 and of the season with the only loss coming at Alabama. And we had the privilege of seeing the Sycamores in person in one of the Vegas tournaments when Don Buster was in town, and they were very impressive. I, I really like this team. Don talked about how he felt this was a team we could make some money on, and he's been right. Uh, this offense has exploded with a 61.6 effective field goal percentage on the season. That is tremendous this far in the season. I don't mm. care who you play. Um, they're scoring uh, 76 points or more in every game played. This is an offense that could hit triple digits tonight. Uh, they don't play again until the 30th when they take on a very good Michigan State team on the road. To me, it's blowout time here for the Sycamores, a team that has been staying under the national radar. And mm-hmm. like you mentioned, this is a team that I think can go a long way, Indiana State, in a blowout today. Love them, man. They uh, are going to take the Mo Valley by storm here, I think, uh, coming up this season. They can play defense. They can shoot from everywhere. They got uh, inside game. Love them. If you guys get a chance to check them out here tonight, uh, check them out. Uh, keep in mind, Indiana State here as we move forward. Also, Brian laid it out. Loves the card. A whole lot of plays here tonight, plus that $2 best bet in the NHL. Nobody's been better. Make sure you visit them over at wagertalk.com. As we bring in Adam Trigger, who knew and probably has been to a game in every one of those schools you mentioned, uh, Brian Leonard. Uh, If not, he probably knows somebody who actually goes to Fisk. Um, So let's talk here, Trigg, about a team you know very well. Actually, both these teams, for that matter. You you previewed, I believe, both of these teams here uh, at the start of the season. One is living up to expectations. One sucks, like beyond sucks, <laughs> even worse than your possible imagination, because I don't ever remember you telling me about your Siena team being this bad and they are getting 13 but they were getting a whole lot against the bonnies too last game and that didn't work out so cornell sienna what are we doing in this game yeah well first just to comment on something brian said listen like you get to see a couple these teams play in person a couple times i really Mm -hmm. do think it gives you like a different perspective Uh, i think you can it's easier to evaluate a team when, you, when you're right there, when you're watching them play as opposed to doing it on TV. Uh, that's why I try to get out to so many games, see as many different ones as possible. And, and then, yeah, I mean, these are two teams kind of right in my neck of the woods. Of course, I went to Siena. Cornell's in central New York. I, it's easy for me to, to get to their games. Um, so, yeah, I have a pretty strong opinion on both teams. And I'm going to go side and total here. So, initially, I was going to go best bet Cornell. Thir- minus 13 for the show. I'll keep that, but I'll talk about why this one probably goes over as well. So first, if we're talking about Sienna in general, you you kind of nailed it, Joe. Uh, no one it, close to the Sienna program in the Albany area could have ever imagined that this season would start this poorly. Uh, a lot Ooh. of new guys on the roster, but still, Michael Ellie um, coming into the year was you know highly you know considered to be our, you know one of the best players in the MAC certainly one of the highest ceilings, you know, one of the better like potential pro prospects. But opening night, he rolls his ankle, pretty bad ankle injury against Holy Cross, and he, he's really been like hampered by that all season. Another thing that really hurt Sienna out of the gate was Sean Dura-Gordon not getting a waiver. Now, of course, as we know, everyone's gotten a waiver. You know, all the waiver <laughs> guys can play. Um, but And I think this line reflects that. But the problem I have here is like Dura-Gordon's not going to save – that is not going to go in and cure all, all of Sienna's problems. 
against a team the caliber of Cornell that plays like Cornell. You know, Sienna will probably be a great bet on team come MAC play because a lot of those MAC teams are not very good. But Cornell is a team that I think is a, a, a really good team on a national level as far as a mid major is concerned. I think they've got a great chance to hang around in the Ivy this year. And the and the reason that Cornell is so tough is their style of play. It's fast pace. They're going to press to beat. Cornell, you've got to be able to break the press and get easy buckets on the other end of the press. And Sienna has turned the ball over as much as any team in the country. Okay. Like they're almost dead last in terms of, of, of turnovers. The other way you beat Cornell is by scoring the basketball because Cornell is going to give you some shots. Like that's, they're very, very efficient offensive team, but where they lack is on the defensive end, specifically at the rim. So if you can get the ball through their press, there's going to be some buckets there, which is why I like the over. But so far, Sienna offensively is near the bottom of, of the country in almost every offensive category. 56.7 points per game. It's 360th out of 362 <clears throat> Division One teams. They're 351st in field goal percentage. They're hitting like 25% from three, which is horrific. That's one, I, I 361. So second to last in the country. Um, so while Dura Gordon's going to help them immensely offensively, because he's a, a, a legitimate scorer. He's a great rebounder. With, without question, he's going to be a boost to that team. You really, like, they're going to need more than that, in my opinion, to, to, to beat Cornell or to even really stay close with Cornell. Because Cornell will pour it on. Like, that's, that's the other thing. They're going to, you know, this is kind of a big deal for them. Like, Sienna's still the team without, like, that gets more attention, even though Cornell's out in central New York. Sienna still gets like a lot of the attention from like Ithaca West, um, you know, aside from Syracuse. So mm-hmm. Cornell's going to want to go and, and, and put on a show in Albany. Like they'll, they'll probably be playing in front of like five, 6,000 people, uh, which is like far more people than they typically get at their games. So they're going to play fast. They're going to press. And that's the type of game where even if Sienna can hang around a little bit because Dura Gordon's helping them offensively, there's probably going to be a stretch where they turn it over a couple times and suddenly Cornell's up 10. And then it's it's not that far fetched to think they can win this game, you know, by fifteen to twenty, which is kind of where I think it lands. So wasn't enough line value for me to to make a uh, client play on Cornell, uh, even with the the movement down. I I, I still think that number is probably about right, uh, but I do lean Cornell's way, just overwhelming Sienna at some point. But with Dura Gordon back, Sienna's going to be better offensively, and so even though I could still see Cornell blowing this one open and and covering the number. The better bet here may actually be the over 151 because Cornell, like you will get some easy buckets from Sienna. As long as you know, they, they have guards that like Zach Tekken is capable. Ellie's a good player. If they can find a way to break the press, there's going to be some easy buckets on the other end, especially if Cornell gets out to a lead because Cornell will, you know, get out to a lead. And then like the garbage time, if there is that in this game could see a whole bunch of, uh, of scoring. So I lean, I, those are pretty strong leans for me in this one. We'll call it Cornell minus one thir- uh, minus 13 over, I believe, is 151 and a half. I'll be really surprised if one of them doesn't get there because I think Sienna's only way to cover this number is if they have a far superior offensive showing to what they've had of late. And, of course, if they have that, they're probably going to push this one over because we know Cornell is very efficient offensively and a very good three-point shooting team. So I'll say Cornell minus the points. And and the over, we'll go co best bet for uh, for the show today. All right, love it. Yeah, the market seems to agree with you too. Is uh, thirteen and a half now for Cornell? One, uh, you know, like you said, one forty seven and a half is what this was as a total overnight. Now up to one fifty one. So all trending in those directions here. Uh, Seven o'clock Eastern time tip with that one. And uh, Trey got in the digit. What do you got locked and loaded here tonight for a two dollar customer appreciation? So I, I lost the shelf life game today, Joe, but I, I won four units. So that's always more important. Hampton Boom! plus 11 and a half was my client play. It's already cashed. It was an 11 a.m. tip. We need more of them. Um, there's, I, I'll say it on every show. There's 362 teams. Someone's got to bite the bullet and play during the day for us so we have something to watch mm-hmm. earlier in the day. Um, so I haven't added anything yet. Um, I probably will. There's a couple games that come into range I will add. If I add them, they'll be two dollars. If not, I'll have some NFL tonight. That's two bucks in, in, until midnight. I think we're allowed to keep it up uh, for two dollars. Yep. So I will get something up there for two bucks. 
nothing right now, but check back in a couple of hours. I love it. All right, great job there. Howard, which I believe Trig uh, just witnessed in person somewhere along the line. The, Ham- there, I the Hampton so. Pirates. The only the, the only reason I'm not wearing my Hampton Pirates Hampton, shirt right now it. is it's it's dirty. <laughs> I wore it last night. The turning stone, <laughs> it's in it. the wash. So yeah. Hampton JMU, that is right. Trig in attendance. He loves betting on them teams he sees here, Rob Vino. Uh, good stuff there. All right, now we got uh, we got one final best bet here, guys. Rob Vino is going to lay it out for us. Do not forget that uh, the opportunity here to partner up with these guys for 2 bucks is happening now. Rob's going to tell you what he's got for $2. And don't forget, if you're new here to Wager Talk TV, Go ahead, uh, hit that subscribe button, become part of the family. Those of you joining us live here today, uh, go ahead, smash that like button here as Vino. I love this best bet of yours. Uh, It's one of my favorite of the day. But tell us uh, before you get into this, what exactly do you got for two bucks uh, up and available now over at Wager Talk? All right, Joe, so we got in overnight with an NBA contest uh, that we used for our $2 play. It's still up and available. Obviously, NBA oh. doesn't tip till later this evening. Um, up and loaded as well is the my first best bet of the bowl season, which goes this week. So while you're at it with the $2 play, pick up the 4% best bet. Um, certainly, as we watch these bowl games each and every year, as time ticks by, these numbers seem to fly all over the place. So you want to get in at correct times. I'd suggest we get in now with the 4% bowl play. So once again, $2 customer appreciation day, NBA play up and available, and also a 4% best bet for bowl action. Let's hop into this Troy at Mississippi game, Joe. Uh, Ole Miss opens 12, 146 the total. Currently 12 and a half. A couple of 13s out there, but you can still get 12 and a half. And 146. I'm going to look from the Ole Miss perspective here. Um, And I think it's important that, you know, it's nice to look at overall statistics, but it's nice to dig in and find out what teams do well, what they don't do well, and whether or not the matchups can be negated or exposed. In this case, I think that Mississippi has the ability to negate what Troy does well. Troy basically is an extreme pace, three point shooting team. Number 45 in the nation in adjusted tempo. Number 55 in three-point percentage. It's what they do. Run and shoot. Ole Miss, number 16 in the nation in three-point percentage allowed. Only 27.6% being made against Ole Miss three-point defense so far this year. And they force opponents to play slower when they are on the defensive end. They only allow a shot attempt every 18 seconds, which is 287th in the nation. So, Slow, slow, slow. Of course, the head coach is Chris Beard. That's why it's slow, slow, slow. Um, You've seen steady improvement. I think it was Adam earlier maybe talking about Florida and their band of transfers and how it takes a little time to mesh. Of course, it was going to take Chris Beard some time. Mm. He inherited this squad. He got a mesh. But let's just take a look at the three-point defense because Beard is noted for defense, right? First five games of the season, four of the five opponents against Ole Miss shot between 36 and 40% from three. Those are high numbers. Last five games, their last five opponents have shot 12%, (laughs) 16.7, 20, 18.2. And congratulations, Cal, you shot 33% from the floor, from beyond the arc against Ole Miss. Those five teams added together, guys, 25 of 120 from three-point land. That's 95 Mm -hmm. misses out of 120 shots, only 20.1%. The opposition in those five games are not stiffs either. Memphis, NC State, UCF, all pretty widely regarded as potential or likely tournament teams this year. So good job out of Chris Beard bringing this team along defensively in the mold that he likes. I, I... Kind of try to look for a blueprint profile opponent if I'm going to bet somebody in here. Looking at Ole Miss's schedule, I think the blueprint is the NC State game, right? That NC State game was right here in Oxford. NC State looks more like Troy than any other opponent they've had here in Oxford. NC State, obviously, under Kevin Keats, high-octane offense, shoot a lot of threes. They're almost identical in team height. So size-wise, every which aspect, it's comparable to NC State other than the roster itself. Ole Miss beat that team by 20, 72 to 52 uh, here in Oxford. 
They were plus 8.9 from field goal uh, differential. They held NC State to 12% from three, and they were plus 10 in three throw points scored. So complete domination against this style of opponent. This opponent doesn't have quite the personnel. I feel like Troy's rebounding numbers are a little bit skewed here. Brian gave a list. I'm going to give my own list because I have one here in my notes. But Troy, when you look, they're number five in offensive rebounding in the country, percentage-wise, offensive rebound percentage. They are plus 90 rebounds against five of their 10 opponents. Half their opponents plus 90 rebounds against these five. Southern New Orleans, SIU Edwardsville, Eastern Kentucky, Reinhardt, who I'm sure Brian Powers at the local grocery right now hanging with chicks from Reinhardt, and oh. University <laughs> of Fort Lauderdale. It, in the other five games they played, they're plus one rebound. One rebound in the other five games combined. Um, if nothing else, the deficiency that Ole Miss has on the defensive rebounding side should be negated here. They obviously are the taller team. they got a seven-foot center. And just, uh, there's no imminent look ahead for Ole Miss here. I'd expect head coach Beard to have the transition defense, a three-point defense locked in. The three-point shooting for the Rebels is better than it is for Troy. I mean, Ole Miss is uh, <laughs> number 23 in the country shooting threes right now, and they shoot 74.5% from the line. If, in fact, we need free throws down the stretch to keep this margin or extend the lead, I think we can count on Ole Miss. Kind of see it as a carbon copy of the NC State game, guys. I'm going to play Ole Miss minus the 12 and a half here. All right, a couple of things there. Number one, I've been here over 20 years in South Florida. I didn't even know there was a University of Fort Lauderdale, much less that they even had a friggin' basketball team, Vino. So congratulations, Troy, for beating, I don't even know what here. I mean, they're going to finish in the bottom of the, uh, of the Sun Belt anyway, but also... And if I'm not mistaken, too, they just got him back. Uh, and Trigg's been talking about it the last couple of weeks with getting these um, the eligibility of these kids to transfer. Well, they got Brandon Murray back last week, former LSU, right? Georgetown stud guard. The rich just got richer with Old Miss. And they're another team, you know, nobody wants to see to pay any attention to because they're in the SEC and everyone loves Kentucky. But Chris Beard... I have a feeling he's going to go scorched earth uh, this year, and it should be a whole lot of fun watching him put that together, that brand of basketball there in the SEC. So there you got it here, guys. You've got, we've learned about a half a dozen schools that exist and play basketball. None of us knew. <laughs> Brian Leonard still trying to figure out where the hell Fisk University is on the map here. I had no idea Fort Lauderdale even has a university, much less a basketball team, but we did give you three best bets. We broke down three of the biggest games, and it is $2 customer appreciation. All three of these guys have an opportunity. You partner up with them tonight. Get it before midnight, guys. Everything reverts back here, but go grab those best bets for 2 bucks. Partner up with them here today. A lot going on. We got a bowl game coming up later, although... Uh, Depending on the side, you're, you're probably maybe a little pissed off that a certain quarterback's not playing anymore. Uh, but uh, the opportunity presents itself. <laughs> Get on board. Uh, join over at wagertalk.com and absolutely no coupon codes needed. Just visit their page and make sure you come back and join us again tomorrow. We got another edition here of the College Basketball Tip-Off Show. And for those of you joining us on this replay, go ahead, click on that video on your screen right now we've got plenty of head-to-head -head, uh, breakdowns here for you of games coming up this week all the marquee matchups just to click away so go ahead click on this video here and make plans to come back and join us again tomorrow best of luck with all your plays we'll see you